Well, from Lurie Children's Hospital to United Healthcare, cyber attacks have been crippling our nation's healthcare system. The attack on Change Healthcare, which is owned by United Healthcare, limits the insurance payments for claims and for medicine. And Washington Post Business of Medicine reporter Daniel Gilbert is joining us now to talk more about this. Daniel, thanks a lot for uh, joining us here. We reported a lot on Change Healthcare. Your reporting indicates that uh, the company processed $1.5 trillion worth of costs here. Tell us exactly what it was that this hack in particular did. So Change Healthcare is a colossus in the world of processing medical claims. It um, has at one time processed basically half of all medical claims in the nation. And so when it became a victim of this cyber attack, the company shut down its operations, try to prevent uh, compromising any other systems. And that led to this widespread outage for all of these healthcare organizations and hospitals, pharmacies across the country that rely on Change Healthcare to connect it to insurance companies, basically that would review those claims and then uh, take care of payment. Was it especially vulnerable here? Uh, without getting too technical, do you have a sense of, of how this happened in the first place? Well, we don't have a, um, a detailed sense of exactly how it happened. We know that there's this ransomware gang that was once thought to have been basically broken up by law enforcement. Um, that has claimed responsibility for this <clears throat> and uh, that basically was able to steal uh, some patient data and then uh, encrypt company files and uh, and has demanded a ransom to decrypt those files and, and give the company their, their access back. So kind of a ransomware uh, attack that unfortunately is becoming increasingly common in the healthcare sector. And, and that ransom traditionally does not get reported, so I'm guessing we don't really have a sense of, of what that figure is and how they recovered from it. How lingering is it, and do you have an idea if uh, that system is, is any better protected now than it was when it became a victim? Well, it's lingered for 13 days now, so uh, it was slow to build. I think a lot of people who first encountered this disruption assumed it was the kind of thing that uh, would be back up and running pretty quickly. But a week went by and people started to get real nervous. And uh, now we're up to almost two weeks and uh, companies are really starting to panic uh, for the ones who were most exposed to change healthcare and have been unable to submit claims for payment or watching their cash reserves dwindle and starting to think about how they're gonna pay for staff uh, and be able to serve patients. Uh, in terms of how secure the thing is. Um, I'm sure that United Healthcare is huddling on this right now uh, across their system to try to uh, recover from this attack. We don't really know how long that's going to take. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a ton of investigation to figure out how to uh, safeguard these systems in the future. You know, the healthcare industry, I, I know they're, they're all holding their breath and watching this. I know the federal government uh, has gotten involved. Can you briefly talk about its role and and any kind of signs of success it might be having on this? Yeah, um, the um, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services today uh, announced a series of steps that it was taking. And basically, they're trying to ease some of the conventional um, bureaucratic mm. uh, uh, sort of choke points where things get tied up just so that claims can get processed more quickly. Um, they have also uh, encouraged uh, private insurance plans to extend some uh, funding to um, healthcare providers who have been impacted by this and are having trouble getting their, their claims approved. Uh, and they have suggested that they'll consider, uh, well, they said that they'll consider reviewing accelerated payments for Medicare um, for individual hospitals uh, that, uh, that are seeking that. Whether that is enough uh, to, to really stem the concerns remains to be seen. Certainly, there are a lot of people who don't think so. American Hospital Association, among them, who was hoping for a much more robust, muscular government right. action, kind of like what we used, what we saw in the early days of COVID. We'll be watching to see how in the heck healthcare leaders can manage this risk. Daniel Gilbert with The Washington Post. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you.